Guys, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thank you guys so much for checking out the blog. Send your questions in, dan at TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. I will answer them, keep you anonymous. Today's question is, comes from a CyberDust user, and that's a great way to get a hold of me if you want on CyberDust. For those of you that, that don't know, CyberDust is an app where you can basically text with people, the messages will disappear. Anyways, add me on there. My username is Dan Sfera. Today's video is going to be quick and to the point because I've done these before, but I wanted to answer this viewer's question. It's how do you pay your PIs? So there's obviously different options, and this is not the case for when a PI is a site owner because obviously at that point, he or she is going to have a say in how they get paid. And it's usually going to come in the form of dividends or profits in addition to some salary. So this is the case for PIs that are employees or even more likely than that, independent contractors for sites. And the independent contractors is more likely for a smaller site. The larger sites probably can have some, some PIs on their payroll. So you can negotiate an hourly rate, which is what you can do if you don't know how many hours you'll need them for every week. So some week you might need them, you might need your PI in the clinic for four hours. Another week you might need them in for 12 hours. Another week you may need them in for six hours. So your needs for that particular PI varies based on how many subjects you're screening in that particular study, et cetera, et cetera. So for that, I would pay an hourly rate. I'm not gonna get into what an appropriate hourly rate is. You're gonna have to do some due diligence yourself. It varies by geographic location. Obviously in California, it's gonna be a higher hourly rate than in Nebraska. It varies a lot on their experience, the PI experience. There's a lot of variables there. So just do, for that, you should do your homework and figure out what an appropriate hourly rate will be for your particular PI in your particular situation. Another option is to do a salary. This is more often the case where you kind of know and you kind of expect um, the same amount of hours for your PI to come into the clinic every week. So let's say it's 10 hours every week, that's pretty consistent. Then you can negotiate a good monthly salary that you both agree upon. And again, very much related to the hourly rate. I don't know what would be appropriate because it varies wildly. Another option which I would use for independent contractors, and I have used for many PIs in the past, is a percentage of the overall study budget. So you can negotiate, hey, in exchange for you being the PI, and that means coming in uh, as needed, uh, seeing patients, meeting with monitors, uh, signing off on EDCs, taking calls with the project managers, things like that, we will, be, we will give you a percentage of the study payment every month. Hopefully you're negotiating monthly payments. But every time we receive a payment, we will make a copy of the check so that there's full transparency there and we will give you a percentage of the study budget. What's a good percentage of the study budget? Ask around, you'll hear crazy range of numbers, okay? What's worked best for me when I'm working with brand new PIs with very little experience is 8% of the study budget. I go all the way up to 25% when they are experienced PIs. So that's my range. I've heard other sites say crazy things like 60%, but my question to them is how do they make money? Um, how do they make a profit? Because most of their profit is going to the PI um, and their payment. So that'd be a good question for me to ask them. So eight to 20% based on the total payment every time you receive a payment for that study. Hopefully this helps. Let me know if it doesn't. Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com and take care.